Are you tired of spending your time and money chasing strategy after strategy only to discover what worked 10, 5, or even 2 years ago is not working now? Things shift fast in the online space, and if you're not keeping up, you're getting left behind. It's time for something different. Welcome to the Marketing, Media, and Money Podcast, where every single episode will be jam-packed with proven, profitable strategies, behind-the-scenes secrets, and what's working now resources. From industry experts and global influencers to help you scale your business, shorten your learning curve, and stand out in a crowded, noisy marketplace. And now, your host, award-winning marketing and media strategist and international speaker, Patty Farmer. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of the Marketing Media and Money Podcast. I'm your host, Patty Farmer, and I'm looking forward to sharing today's industry expert with you. And I'm really, really excited because today we're going to talk about money. We all love talking about money. It's like our favorite topic, right? But here's what I want to say. Profit isn't accidental. It's planned. And that is what our guest likes to talk about, too. The other thing we're going to talk about today, so you're going to want to get your pen and paper out, is we're really going to talk about teams. And we're all talking about building teams. But guess what? We're going to kind of have a different perspective on it today, because today we're going to talk about who is your actual best team member. And that answer is money. So we're going to talk about that today. So this is going to be kind of a money episode and who doesn't want more money, right? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So get your pen and paper out, get your questions ready, because this is the topic of the day. So let me tell you a little bit about our guest because she is an expert and an authority in this field. So let me tell you, Connie Vanderzanden is on a mission to help entrepreneurs live the lifestyle they desire by learning the simple steps, structure, and discipline to create and save money. And with 34 years of accounting and bookkeeping experience, a variety of industry knowledge, and her own real-life business growth journey since 2001, Connie developed the Going Beyond Revenue Cash Handling System, focusing on cash flow planning that creates profitable and sustainable businesses. Connie is a true Oregonian, born and raised in the beautiful Pacific Northwest, where she spends time with her husband of 34 years and their fur kid. So welcome, Connie. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you, Patty. I'm honored to be here. I'm really excited because this part about being from Oregon is super exciting for me because I just purchased land in Oregon. I'm going to be building a house there and that's where we're going to be moving to. So I'm super oh. excited about that. Well, so we may be neighbors before this. <laughs> well, welcome. Have you ever been to Oregon before? Oh, so many times and I love it. Oh, and yeah. I knew that's what I wanted to do. And, awesome. and so I am going to be building a venue there and a retreat plus my retirement home. So I am oh. super, super excited. So yes. We'll talk awesome. about that another time because everybody else is going to want to hear about that too. And if they're following me on social media, they've been hearing me talk about it. So but let's jump into the topic of money. So as I alluded to in when I was reading your bio is really about your own real life business growth journey. Yep. Right. Yes. And so I always feel like a lot of times when people are talking about something that they're an expert and they're an authority in. We always want to say, okay, yeah, but you know, where did they get that experience? What really makes them an expert, right? And so a lot of times it's through what we've been through, but then it's also the other things that we've done in all together. That's where we really get to serve and support other people. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your own business growth journey so that we can kind of get some backstory? Yeah, no, it's a, uh... And it's a different backstory because people hear that I have an accounting background and they think, oh, I must know how to do money and numbers perfectly. And that is not the case. <laughs> it was a, a journey of like, I wanted to do things, have more freedom. So I started my business and bookkeeping was the easiest thing I knew how to do. Numbers have always been super easy for me. And I really, back in 2001, loved the conversation with the business owners. Like you could, this is when you would actually go out and you would be able to sit across the table from a business owner 
and just to hear their stories and talk to them about how money was supporting them or not supporting them most of the time. And you could, I could make a real difference by doing that. And then the business decided to grow. It was going to grow beyond just me. And that's where it got really sticky. I didn't make a plan. I didn't have a budget. I just kept throwing money and debt at the growth. And of course, building it based on somebody else's idea of what it should look like. I loved my office. I loved my space. I loved having the team. I learned a lot about hiring. But six years into it, I looked back and I hadn't paid myself for six years, really. And I had 50,000 in debt and the business was not sustainable. And so I had to learn how to be with money and redo that relationship with money. And yeah, I could do the numbers. I was doing the bookkeeping. I could do all those things, but it's the relationship and how we, how we interact with money and how we use it to plan for the future. What that I, I wanted to avoid, I didn't want to pay attention to it at all. And so that's where I had to learn it. And a lot of things came into play. A coach introduced me to Profit First, and I became a Profit First professional. And Mike at the time said back in 2008, make it your own. And so I did. And But what I ended up doing is I, the spots in the book that seemed easy for accountants to put into place I, were not as easy. Like I broke all the rules. There were a lot of places I stopped. I wouldn't continue. And the thing is, is that the book is great for the process. What Mike didn't take into account was there's a lot of us that want to avoid the numbers, want to avoid the money. And so we have to look at underneath why we're doing that. What's our story? What's the subconscious belief behind it? And what can we use to do to learn from that so that we can use that same process? It's a great process, but what do we need to learn about ourselves to make that happen? And so that's where my expertise comes in and that openness of like, okay, yeah, we have debt. How do we get out of debt? How do we rebuild the business? How do we make it more sustainable? just because that's been my, my learning opportunity. And it's funny, astro- if anyone's into astrology, <laughs> my human design, my purpose here this time is to heal the money wound and to make numbers easy for people as I move forward. And so- I think that makes sense. I yeah. think a lot of times people don't really realize, you know, I always, you know, I'm in marketing and so I hear people all the time, they don't track, they don't really pay attention to the numbers. And I always yeah. joke around all the time because really, I was an A student and I just really loved everything except for math. And I always like to say all the time that I hate math except when it comes to money, right? You know, and so when it comes to money, that's a whole nother thing for me, mostly because I have always really believed, you know, there've been times in my life where I've had money, not had money. I mean, you know, and so I have always realized that for me, it was all about time freedom but I knew that money could help me get there. So I felt like, Mm -hmm. you know what, Patty, in my life, what was important to me was to be able to do things for two reasons. They bring me joy. Right now, I don't do it. It doesn't bring me joy. When I'm picking clients or projects, they need to bring me joy. So that was like the first thing. And then the second thing for me, when I was really thinking about what is it that I wanted is really about lifestyle. And it was really kind of funny because you said that too, but for me, I tell my clients all the time, I'm going to help you design the lifestyle you want to live in and then build a business that supports that lifestyle, not the other way around. But when I was thinking about math, it's just kind of really like, I want to be able to do things that feed my soul, right? And the thing is, you can do that when the things you're doing that are revenue generating, you do them properly and effectively, you can do more of the things that feed your soul. And so to me, that balance of doing that meant having uncomfortable conversations, mostly with myself and really understanding that I needed to, I was the only entrepreneur in my family. And it was really like resetting your money DNA, <laughs> yeah, right? You it know, is. You just, it's mindset. You have to reset that because I think that's why like when people get married, a lot of times they say that's one of the biggest divorce things is because people mm-hmm. were raised totally different and they have a different mindset about money. And a lot of times couples don't talk about it before they get married, yeah. right? You know, so yeah. having that money mindset. So I could see where from your point of view and what you're doing. And I think coupled with a myth that I really have and a pet peeve, which is that there are other people, not me in marketing that just really encourage people to just go into debt to hire them. Right. Which Mm -hmm. 
my back story is that I was in mortgage. So because I was in mortgage and so I know how to read a credit report and how all that. And so to me, I don't believe that that balances that for me, right? I've seen the, yeah. what has happened because of that. And so if somebody comes to me and says, oh, well, Patty, I'll just take it out of my 401k or I'll do this or I'll do that. And they don't have a plan and they don't have, I mean, it's okay if I'm all about monetizing, right? It's okay if you know that this thing I'm going to do isn't going to make me money for six months or whatever. But do you have a plan for how it's yeah. going to, you know, it's okay to give yeah. yourself this time to get it going, but to just do things and throw more money at the wall. And that's lazy marketing and spaghetti marketing, but I hope it sticks. Mm -hmm. And then you're just further and further in debt. And so sometimes when people come to me, they've already hired those other people. And then I have to fix this. So I got to tell you, I love what you're saying. I feel like it's a conversation people should have with you. Yeah. And it will really help them to know where they should spend their money, how they should spend their money, what the plan is, right? In order to be able to, because most people don't understand even the difference between revenue and profit, right? <laughs> you know, they. Right. And everyone has a different point of view of profit. You know, you go to your tax person, they're looking at it from a tax aspect. So pay less taxes. That's their goal is. And the bookkeeper is just looking at the profit and loss statement, but an entrepreneur, profit to them is what's left in their bank account. And if they're not paying attention to the numbers, if they're not really clear on how the money is flowing, they'll be like, there's, what do you mean I owe tax? I, there's no money left in the bank account, how they're, it's disconnected. And so, yeah, it's, but I love this part about, yeah, if you want to use that, I, I'm a big, i I think debt is important and can be used successfully, um, but just make a plan for it and going in with your eyes wide open about what the expenses are. And I bet the first key of any of my pillars anyway, is to know your numbers. And that's what it is. It's, it's getting the black and white of the numbers out and shining a light on it. And then really get into yourself about what do you want to create? How does the money want to support you? And what's, what do you really need for your lifestyle as well? So oh, I'm all business about knows. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Which I think it is kind of interesting too, though, because, you know, when I'm thinking about it, you know, I'm in marketing and a lot of times people are like, you know, they want, you know, their marketing person sometimes to be like their magic bullet. Like if I just pay you this money, it's going to be like magic, right? You know, this yeah. is like the last bullet, like, you know, this is it. And for me, I'm like, well, not really. And so I think early on, clear back, you know, 30 years ago, I realized early on, like, you have to be able to market your business, right? Mm -hmm. And so I have always had a, a percentage of the money off the top went into a marketing budget for me. So I always had money for marketing. Yeah. And when I owned the mortgage company, I used to tell that to the people that I hired. I'd be like, listen, you want to do that. At the end of the year, if there's money in the end of the year at that marketing thing, now you can buy big purchase. Oh, is this the new printer or the late, you know, blah, blah, blah that you need. And stuff. There's ways that you can do it, but spending money with no plan on how you're going to leverage that money. I always like to say every dollar bill, you know, has a plan attached yeah. to it. What are you doing with that dollar bill, right? You know, everyone, and never mind, you know, hundreds, right? You know, we're just talking yeah. about whatever. So I love that we're having this. And I really love that, you know, you say on your website that money follows joy, right? I'm all about joy. Money follows joy. And that's why we say, you know, do what you love and the money will follow. Well, yes, and? it will follow, right? I mean, there's more to that. Don't we wish that we could, let me put that parentheses there. So if you heard that quote, what pops into your mind and what's that little parentheses you want to put after that? Go ahead and tell us, Connie, yeah. what would that be you'd want to say there? Well, we have to actually take action. I did that. You know, I listened to that quote and I waited, waited for money to drop on my doorstep, you know, that abundance thinking. But the key piece that was missing from that is that you actually have to take action. You have to actually have a conversation and ask people, invite people to work with you, get out and be seen, which is part of the marketing. And that's the piece we want to ignore. We want to think again, we want our bookkeeper to take care of our numbers so that we don't have to think about it. But it's still part of the entrepreneur's job to lead their business, to have that vision, to know what they're working towards. And so we have to actually get out there and talk about it. So yeah, money will follow, uh, but you got to ask for it too. You got to. Oh, isn't that so true? And 
I think that's what we're going to dive into right now. So I want to yeah. talk about the seven money actions to craft a resiliency plan for your business. Oh, like, so okay. we're talking about that. Okay. I want to really do that. So what's the first one? Well, the first one and uh, is going to be for anyone that I talk to is didn't know your numbers. This is really important when COVID first hit, you know, or, or businesses restructured is that they, you need to know your numbers, get the, out the black and white. And it doesn't mean that you have to go and get a special tool. It doesn't mean that you have, you can use a spreadsheet, you can use bank statements, but we got to know what, what we're, you're starting, what's your starting point. And so, and that's the key piece there. And since Patty knows, thank you. Thank you, Patty. <laughs> so, but before you know your numbers, let's go back is to have, be compassionate about where you're starting because resilience, again, the resiliency is this piece about that, especially at the beginning is that everyone that you're having your own moments. So can you be compassionate for yourself and for others and really say, okay, yeah, this is a spot. Cause I remember when I first realized that I had gotten myself in this big hole with debt. I had to learn to say, okay, yes, I did. And I didn't know any better at the time. And so now I know better. Now I'm going to take action. What can I do next? So compassion is the first one. Because you got to give yourself grace. Like I think sometimes yes. taking that breath and just being kind and gentle to ourselves and acknowledging, like, you know, putting it under the rug doesn't help. Acknowledging it, being no. compassionate and kind and giving ourselves grace, right? Yes. And then the other one, the next one would be knowing your numbers. And that, I think that's the one thing that people want to avoid. And even if you have a, a bookkeeper and they are giving you reports, do you actually know your numbers or are you just, they're handled and you're ignoring them? That would be a good question to ask. Do you really know what your bare minimum is? Do you know what you need to pay your rent, not only for the business, but for your lifestyle as well. And I think that's the one piece a lot of entrepreneurs forget is what does my lifestyle need? What's the bare minimum I need to contribute to my household and what do I want it to grow into? That's a good one. Yeah. The third one is cash conservation and communication. So uh, cash conservation is at times in our business, we need to have a bare minimum and then we have a growth. And so especially at, when businesses are getting restarted, you may have to have less expenses uh, in, your, in what you're paying for right now, but you can grow into it. So what are those? What can be cut off, cut down or reduced? And what can be added later? And then start communicating about things to your vendors, to your team, asking for what that, which leads into the next one is asking for what you need. But you might have to have those conversations with vendors about, paying a little slower or over time, and then ask for what you need is, is, is the next one is like, do you need the bank to help you with that? Do you need to get some financing? What things can a vendor do or your clients can do to help support that as well? And I think that's the hard part is uh, asking for what you need around money, especially if you've not healed or have compassion. Again, why is compassion the first one? Because we have to be compassionate for where we're at. And then if you're compassionate from where you're at, all you're doing is asking for help. And if that's, you know, a muscle we have to build, a lot of women don't know how to do that. So, and then again, money kind of confuses it. And then the next one is leaning into your community. You never know if somebody's out there that could help support you. And like you and I are both belong to the dames right now. That's a great community and get creative with your community. Community is a big lesson for me right now about of where, how it is. It's not just our family and friends or our business colleagues. It's, are you in connection with the community that you live in? Are you in connection with, you know, the state, the city, the government, those other things? It's, you might have to expand your version of what community looks like. And then uh, the last goes one back, is, which kind of, I don't yeah. want to cut you off, but that kind of goes back yeah. to the ask for what you need too, because if you mm -hmm. have these strong ties in this community, it can kind of open up for you space for you to be able to ask for what you need because you've built yeah. those relationships with the people that are in your community. So it's not so difficult to do the ask, right? You know, right. and not only that, but I kind of feel like if you built the relationships, like relationships are the currency in today's business environment, right? So because mm -hmm. it is, 
you almost in a way can have a bigger ask the bigger the relationship is i mean if you've had a good relationship you know the no like trust factor you've taken that time to build that relationship i mean maybe if you really don't know them very well but you're in a community to be able to say oh could you you know make a comment on my this right could you share my mm -hmm. blog post yeah. or whatever i mean that's not that big an ask but if you built a relationship with somebody in that community to be able to say oh you know i'd love to have a conversation with you about being a promotional partner for a launch i'm going to have or something the ask itself can grow as your relationship within that community also grows would you say yes it's funny is a lot of us put on this and well, in the beginning when people didn't know i was having my rock bottom moment in my business because on the outside it looked very professional that i had all my stuff together and if i had let that wall down a little bit and leaned into my community at the time I might have been able to have different options. And I, that's the piece is that we're, again, going back to compassion being the first one is how can you be more, a little bit more vulnerable? You don't have to share everything about what's going on, but if we can break down that barrier of that professionalism is holding everything back and vulnerable crying in the corner is the other option. How can you meet in the middle where you can actually share your story a little bit more and connect on that level? And then, you know, I think when you're being resilient, I don't want to say it's devil's advocate, but the sixth one is what ifs. What if this comes in? What if this? So a lot of people are like, well, when I start making money or money starts coming in, what, I, what do I do next? Well, great. Use some time to dream and think about what that would look like. What if you get a client unexpected? What can you do with that money? What could be added back? What could you add back to your lifestyle? What if a client left, what would that need to be? So it's kind of like making, um, when I look at financial plans, I like to look at the bare minimum or the bare minimum, better, best. <laughs> That's what it is. I like to have three plans in place so that as money comes in and we're consistently creating the revenue we want, we know what we're going to do next, that we stair step it a little bit, but sometimes we have to stair step down too. So thinking of those options. And then the last one, which people don't think about until well after it is what is your learning op in the moment? Because the learning op in the moment is we still have an emotional tie to what happened. So can you write down or at least capture what did you learn in the moment? What, what was the financial pain or what was the emotional pain? And how did you find uh, the innovative way to get out of that? So for example, uh, letting a team member go was really hard for me. And I had to like, remember to capture what was happening. Why did I let them go? What was I learning? And as a leader, what did I learn from the experience? What would I do next time? If I had waited until the next time that came up, I wouldn't have remembered all that stuff. And then I would have had to probably go back through the learning op again, which I have done many times. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> I, I'm a firm <laughs> believer for me. I have found in my life, it's like, until you learn the lesson, it's going to keep on showing up for you over and over and over again. And I have to tell you, I'm one of those people I keep thinking, why do I always have to go through everything at least twice before I get it? Like, so I understand that. But, you know, I think these seven things are really good. But I think, wouldn't you say that, you know, there's different stages in our business and we go through them several times, right? Because things yeah. in life happen, as we know, for last year, right? You know, what's happened and nobody expected that. And I would dare say that anybody five years ago that was ever asked the question where do you see yourself in five years this would not have been that <laughs> right no. you know so nobody got that answer right so i'm thinking that when we think about it you know we can be in startup mode and startup doesn't always have to mean you're starting your business startup could mean that you're starting some new thing you're starting a new mm -hmm. division you're starting a new product launcher you're just starting something new but then, you know, there's at times in your business when you're scaling, right? You know, you're in business growth mode. And so everything is about growth. And then, you know, when you're scaling, but then you get to the point where now you've got to sustain that, right? Like now you're talking about sustainability. So all of these things that when I'm looking at those seven things that you just shared with us, they may mean different things depending upon what stage you are in your business, right? Right. You know, so this isn't like, oh, we're only talking to you if you're in this stage, because no. the reality is that at every one of those stages, 
you need to ask for what you need, you need to have compassion, all of those things. And they may mean different things to you. Your action may be differently in doing them, and it may seem like it's different, but the reality is every time I get ready to ramp up or level up in something, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, why am I feeling this? Like I've done this how many times? But the reality is it is something new. You, you know, you, there's no guarantee that that's going to be successful just because the last five were, right? You know, so did you yeah. do the work? Did you plan? And I think that it's not just planning. It's like preparation too, right? You know, it's always about preparation. And I love that because those are probably your things for me once those things happen. And so that's why I work really well with somebody who does what you do. Because really for me now, it's all about how am I going to, you know, what's my pricing strategy? How am I going to position them in the marketplace? Whatever. But the bottom line is you have to have that plan and that prep, right? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times I think the reason why people don't see the results that they want to see is they forgot some of those steps, right? Yeah. They kind of jumped the gun. They left some of those steps off and they just kind of, oh, well, I'm just going to kind of jump forward on some of those things, right? You know, and so I think that, you know, more and more we're seeing that. So I know I read some of your blogs and some of your speaking <laughs> topics. I went to your website and I really loved learning about the revenue trap, <laughs> right? You oh, know, I yeah. saw that you really loved about the revenue trap, how to make more, keep more and feel good about money, right? Because yeah. isn't that what we all want, right? You know, mm -hmm. so I really love that you have these basics that you're teaching people about going beyond revenue, like with this system that you have, because the bottom line really honestly is that people will do better if they have a system. And if it's mm -hmm. a simple system, which I love that yours is a simple system, that's even easier, right? Because a lot of times people want to take action, but if that system has 25 things, right, they're probably not going to make it past five or seven, right? right? You know, they're right. not going to do it or they're going to, pick and choose some of the ones in the middle and they'll pick and choose the ones they want to do. And then they're like, well, I did that. Why didn't I get the results? Right. And that is a trap that we all fall into. So having a simple system and you know what, if we could do that all by ourselves, right. If we could just do that all by ourselves, that'd be really, really great. But you know, and I know that like 90% of the time that doesn't happen because it's hard to be in the mucky muck with your own stuff, right? That's why yes. you got to reset the DNA. And that's why you need somebody. That's why there's coaches, right? That's why coaches have coaches is because sometimes it's just too hard to do it yourself. And when you stand in your own way and who wants to stand in their own way in money, right? Like, right. oh, do you want to be the obstacle standing in your own way and be the roadblock? So sometimes you're like, oh, but I don't want to spend the money. Well, sometimes you got to, you know, the, another cliche, right? You got to spend money to make yeah. money, but yeah. it's where are you spending your money? So, you know, what do you got to say about that? Because I think you're right with me on that. <laughs> and it, again, it goes, yeah, it goes back to some of the things we already talked about, about, uh, I love the cash handling system because I think you started off about talking about the marketing budget, about saving some money. And that's what the cash handling system does is that it allows us to intentionally use money for those pieces. And so, but first, you know, the first thing is always knowing your numbers. We got it. We got to know what those are and looking for what that is. Now, a lot of people will get stuck there for a lot of well, the reasons. reason why I wanted to bring that up was because I know who listens to the podcast, right? Yeah. And so I wanted the reason why I'm what I'm trying to make really clear to whoever's listening is that I know there are people who listen to my podcast who are seven figure earners and some that are six yeah. figure earners and some that are only been in business for a year. And they're like, why can't I get past, you know, $60,000 a year? Right. And I don't want them to think those are the people that we're talking to. Right. You know, so right. it doesn't matter yeah. if you're making mid six figures or you just broke seven figures or wherever you are believe me if you've never taken care of these things they're going to come back up and as i said in the beginning sometimes you can have money and then you cannot have money and then you can have money whatever yeah. if you follow a system and you get it right in the beginning it's like foundationally yeah. right you get that right then they won't keep coming back up so i just wanted to make it clear that when you're talking about this because a lot of times when people think about getting out of debt, saving money, whatever, they think you're talking about somebody who isn't making money. And that is absolutely not true. Yeah. Somebody could be in this situation. And like I said, they're making mid six figures. So I just kind of wanted to make sure that whoever's listening out there, that we are talking to you, we don't care how much money you're making. 
<laughs> yeah, we don't, we do not care. And, and making more money. And if you haven't solved some of the issues about how you're using money, making more money is just going to create a bigger, a bigger problem. So a lot of people think I, I've worked with a couple clients who wanted to have a big launch and then all their money issues would be solved if they make seven figures, which is why it's called the going beyond revenue cash handling system, because it is not about the top line number. It is what, how you are intentionally use it. How do you intentionally want to add to your, to your lifestyle? And what does your business actually need? And if you desire growth or making a big impact, yeah, your revenue number may need to be seven figures, but it depends on what you want money to do. And so it, that doesn't have to be the destination. A lot of people may just want a five figure or six oh, figure business. Connie, so. you just got to know that <laughs> I have to tell you the biggest lesson. I, I don't know if it was really a lesson, but it was an aha moment for sure was for me to really understand that when people early on in my business, when people talked about lifestyle, you just have to know that I don't care what you see on TV. For some people, they may want to take 10 vacations a year and go out yeah. on, you know, travel first class and do all that. But I got to tell you, I will never forget. It was the biggest aha moment of my life in my business when I was speaking and there was this woman sitting in the front row crying while I was talking. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, did I offend oh. her? I was totally, totally freaked out. And when I got done, she got up and was running out of the room. And I just felt I was prompted to like go after her. And I just wanted to give her a hug, right? You know, and I, I could tell that it brought up something, right? You know, so when I was talking to her, she said, well, you were talking about lifestyle. And I said, I said, well, kind of tell me about that. I can kind of feel like, you know, that brought something up for you. And she said something that I, I just wanted to kiss her and thank her because it's something I've never forgotten. And actually I'm amazed that I'm not crying because usually every time I tell this story, I get, I get oh. choked up. But basically what she said to me was, you know what makes me pick up the phone every day and make calls? Now I know most of us don't do calling anymore, but, but she said, you know what really makes me pick it up? And I'm like, no, I don't, but I'd love it if you'd share with me. She says, I would love, here comes the choking up part. She goes, I would love if all my appliances in my house matched so I wouldn't be embarrassed to have people come over. I was like, oh my gosh. And I realized right then that what one person's lifestyle is, is not what another person wants. Somebody may want yeah. to just be able to get off every day at three o'clock so they can go take their kids to the soccer practice, yeah. right? And so it's whatever they want it to be, not what you want it to be. And so all of those things that you're talking about are going to be different for every person. So that's why I very early on was like, oh, let's talk about lifestyle first. And then let me help you build a business that will support that lifestyle. Not the other way around, because I don't want to decide for you what your lifestyle should be, right? right. You right. need to decide what that is. And so all of these things that you're talking about, for me, really, honestly, is that is like, and here's a word that we don't talk about, right? So we had, okay, so there's profit and planning and preparation. And I've talked about, you know, positioning and all that stuff. <laughs> But here's something we talk about pricing, right? You know, oh, you have to be able to price things correctly. I'm all about that. But what's the price you're willing to pay too? Because are you willing to work, you know, 50 hours a week now so you don't have to later, right? Some people, you know, right, start out from the beginning. Wouldn't you say this? Somebody said to you, oh, I'm not working an hour more than 40 hours a week. I don't want to do it, you know, whatever. And now you have to build that plan based on this is what they're willing to do, right? You know, and sometimes people have, I mean, there's non-negotiables and then there's negotiables, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so I know for me, there were some super non-negotiables. And an example of that was for me, I did not want to work on Fridays. That was my first goal in my business. Like, what do I have to do? What's the price I'm willing to pay to not have appointments on Fridays? because I knew I wanted to be 100% present with my family on the weekend. And I knew if I worked on Fridays, I would take that right into the weekend. And I wanted to be able to have Patty day, you know? And yeah. so that has worked for me. And since then, now I, my plan is that I actually don't do clients on Monday either. And yeah. Monday's prep day, right? You know, so mm -hmm. Patty days on Friday, prep days on Monday, and Tuesday, Wednesdays, Thursdays, when I see my clients and I actually work 10 hour days on those days, with them, but I'm always prepared and it's, I show up and it's great and everything, but I didn't do that from day one. I had to no. prep for that. I had to have a plan for that. What was I willing to do? And it took several years to get there. Right. Yeah. And so 
I do feel like, yes, lifestyle is great. Design that. But then you got to know you got to have a plan to get yeah. there. So sometimes people are realistic. Sometimes it's not realistic, but that's where it comes with the negotiable things and the non-negotiable, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah. Bandwidth is one of those things that we don't talk about a lot when you're doing your plan. You know, I, I've been in many masterminds and coaching sessions and the bandwidth or how you want to show up in your business, what uh, what how many days you want to work, how many hours you want to see your clients has never come into play. And so these revenue numbers were picked out of thin air because we thought we would want to do those. But then how are you going to deliver on that? And then I think that's why people also don't like to do a financial plan or aka the budget because they tend to fall short. And so, because either they're, they don't want to invest as much time in their business. And so they're not able to create as much revenue. And they're, they're feeling like, I'm not getting the right, there's something missing here. And it's just simply because they hadn't taken time to consider what their bandwidth was going to be, how much time, you know, vacation, personal time off, planning time. I, oh my gosh, I never considered planning or admin time when I first started my business. And so that's why if it really leads to burnout. It leads to burnout. That's why business owners burn out and close is that there's time that we need to put in there. We can't be 100% billable. We cannot create money 100% of our time. So what does that look like? And, and be honest with ourselves. And then that we can create pricing structures and uh, cash flow structure. It's all about choice. If you're saying yes to one thing in your life, you're going to have to say no to something. And so what, what are you willing to say no to? And that's choice though, right? I mean, that all yeah. really comes, that really does come to, you know, being able to, to make a choice, right? You yeah. know, I mean, I think, you know, some people, I mean, I start my day at 6 a.m., like on the phone working. But the reason why I do is because I have international clients and there's a time zone, right? You know, yeah. so I do that, right? So I have different things and I have clients that they'll come to me and say, oh, well, Patty, it's this and, and it's that, and this is what's non-negotiable. I don't want to do this. And and I'm like, okay, good. It's good to know those things. Yeah. But then to get those non-negotiable things, what are you willing? What are the deal breakers? What are those things? It's almost like being married, right? You know, oh, I, yeah. I don't want somebody who drinks. I don't want somebody who does that. Oh, okay, well, what am I willing to do, right? You know, so it's, you just have to be able to decide what that is so you can make that plan. But mm -hmm. I think it's also really like all those seven things, it just comes back to that. So I yeah. really, I love this, Pani. I think it's a conversation that people, aren't willing to have. I love that you have a system and a simple one. I think that is really, really great. So I really appreciate that. So, you know, I try to ask as many questions as I can to cover as many things, <laughs> right? But I always want to make sure that I give you the freedom to really make sure that, you know, that we reach who you're talking to, right? right. So I want to say, is there a question I didn't ask you, but, you know, you want to answer it anyway? Like, what's a question? Like, do you have a question? Maybe I just didn't touch on it, right? Or, or you just want to share something. What's exciting about right now? Is there a project you're working on or something you're excited about? Oh, uh, well, I have my actual, uh, I have a book coming out <laughs> soon that I'm really excited about that is talking about money being your, your best team member. So I'm super excited to have that launch out into the world. But there is, besides that book, I've always wanted to write a book about my dogs. So I've learned so much about being a business owner from watching my dogs, you know, they're nudging, they're constant, like asking for things. And, you know, it's kind of a, a funny thing, but someday I will write about that because they've taught me how to slow down and rest. They've taught me how to play more, how to be more joyful in the business. And when you're coming out of having a lot of burnout, uh, you need to relearn those lessons. And so I've been really grateful to have them in my life. And uh, what kind of jobs? Uh, well, I, we had a chow who's passed on and he's, he taught me a lot about aging of like, how, what do you want to do with your life as you grow older? And what would that, who would, who's going to take care of you <laughs> at those times? And so, and then our current uh, fur kid is a black lab mix. She's a Weimarimer German short hair. And so she's got a lot of energy. And she's an, it, a, lot of, a lot of character in there as well. <laughs> so I love that. I have two dogs as well. One of them is a purebred Shih Tzu. The other one is a, uh, we call him a bullshit because he is a, a French bulldog and a Shih Tzu mix. So <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, it's, so good. So, it's like, they're so adorable, but they're both, I rescued them both. And I really kind of say, oh. I think they actually rescued me. Would you believe yeah. this, Connie? It's the first time in my life I had pets. So it was. 
And I've learned so much from my dogs, like so much from my dogs. I love it. I talk about them all the time. I mean, I have six daughters, so I have kids, right? You know, but, but I mean, but I love my dogs. And so I, I think it is kind of, uh, I, I love that. I, I really do. I just love that. Like, just stop me in my tracks right there. It's like, oh, I love that so much. So yeah. I think that's awesome. So Connie, how can people connect with you? I know they're going to want to. What's the best way to connect yeah. with you? Yeah. So the best way is my website. It's profitwithconnie.com. Lots of options on there. But the key is I want to make sure that people have their questions answered and they know what their next steps are. So that's the easy step is just go there. I love that. And you came bearing gifts too. So yes. we have a gift for yeah. the audience. So tell us a little bit about the gift and we will have the link posted below. So they'll be able to just go and click on it right there. But tell us a little bit about it. Yeah. Well, um, so moneyactiontips.com, there are, you can pick your gift that you'd like, but there is the first three steps of the cash handling system that you can download. And again, you can book an immediate call with me to make sure all your questions are answered or we have a e-zine, um, a profit zine that we send out that like goes over those money tips on a easier digestible uh, method over several weeks so that a nurture sequence so that you get I to learn that. more about it. Yeah. So thank you so much. And I just want to ask you, this is our open mic portion of the show that everybody loves. So what is your number one marketing media or money? which I'm sure which one it is, right? What's your <laughs> number one marketing media or money tip that you'd like to share with the audience? Yeah, my biggest tip is what, and the most impactful tip I had was when I automated my clients, how they paid me. So I moved from hourly to a retainer base, but then I also made sure that all my clients paid either by ACH or credit card. And I know a lot of people don't want to get paid by credit card because there's a fee for it, but a lot of the to tools do a business. now- it is, it's just the cost of doing business. But when I took that away from waiting for the check in the mail or waiting for them to say yes and pay it themselves, it changed my cash flow dramatically. And I got paid up front for the time. And it's, I just had this come up because my client is, a, he's going to close his business later this year. And so we had to take him off that. And I had to like relook at that tip and go, oh, yeah. This is why I do this. Now I've got one client that's going to be built after the fact. And I'm like, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. It puts it. Well, I think that it it's important. So I think that that is yeah. important. That's a great money tip. So I really appreciate yeah. that. Thank you so much for being here with me, Connie. I appreciate you so much. This was great information. I love it. I'm sure my audience loved it as well. <laughs> Make sure that you connect with her, grab your free gift by clicking below. So I really appreciate that. And I also want to thank our sponsor, the Exacta Corporation, developer of the Family Organizer Plus platform. And for more information, check them out at exactacorp.com. And if you would like a simple answer to the question, where should I focus my time and energy to attract highly qualified ideal clients, then we would like to invite you to take the marketing media money assessment and in three minutes or less, you're going to know where you're excelling, where you can make a few changes, and what steps to take to achieve massive results. So just go to www.m3, that stands for Marketing Media Money, so m3bizquiz.com. So again, thank you for joining us on the Marketing Media Money Podcast. And if you enjoyed today's episode, and I'm sure you did, please subscribe and review the podcast on your favorite listening platform. So thank you, everyone. I really appreciate you being here. Make it a phenomenal day, and we will see you again. Thank you for joining us today on the Marketing, Media, and Money Podcast. <laughs> to shorten your learning curve even more, make sure to grab your free copy of the Marketing, Media, and Money magazine at www.marketingmediamoney.com. I promise your business will thank you.